We've been talking a lot about Home Capital Group this week, about a billion dollars withdrawn from its high-interest savings deposits in the last week alone. We've received an awful lot of emails and messages from people worried about how to protect their money, and so we wanted to get you some answers. To break down what you need to know, whether you owned any home capital products or not, Shannon Lee Simmons is a financial planner and founder of the New School of Finance. What are you hearing from people on, on this sort of broader subject? Yeah, I mean, people have always been worried about it, but whenever something like this happens, it really comes to the forefront. And I get to field a lot of questions around what happens to my money if my financial institution goes bankrupt? Could this happen to me? I think that's the, the big thing is uh, people don't really know right. what happens if a uh, happen financial in Canada, institution you know, goes insolvent. Right. right, exactly. And so um, fielding those questions around how you're protected and who's actually protecting you is something that's coming up more and more, especially in the case of this. And I mean, we're certainly not saying that home cap's going under or that any... But, what we are saying no. is we should be better informed about how this system works and we should know more about where our money is and, and what is sort of protecting it. So take us through the products that financial institutions offer and what's covered. Right, so I think that there's um, there's a couple of ways of thinking of this. So we, a lot of people have heard about the CDIC, that's the Depository Insurance. Right. Um, and so that's a crown corporation. And so that's gonna cover your basis around things like your savings accounts, GICs, checking accounts, term deposits. Like think about the cash type of things that you're right. owning. We have a list here yeah, that we're looking at on the screen. So CDIC is the Canada Deposit Insurance Company. And at the top, let's just go through it line by line. Mm. Checking savings accounts, uh, CDIC covers that. So let's say, heaven forbid, the financial institution goes under, what happens to my money in a checking or savings right. account? Right, and so it's really important to see the type of account. So you could have one savings account that has $100,000 in it. You could also have an RSP with a GIC in it that has $100,000 in it, and then you'd actually be covered up to $200,000. So it's not like it's just per financial institution. Right. It's the type of account. Um, so any of those kind of depository things, those are covered by CDIC. When we get to investments, that's right. a totally different story. So then we have the CIP... Uh, CI FP, the sorry. Canadian yeah, Investor Protection, Protection Fund. Fund. And the so that's CIPS. under, yeah, under uh, IROC. And then we also have the MFTA for mutual funds and right. stuff like that. So those cover your investments and not necessarily the deposit side of things. And those have way more coverage. So general accounts are covered up to a million dollars. And then, yeah. And they also have separate accounts, which are like your registered accounts, RSPs, RIFs, and that's another million dollars. So you could potentially be covered up to $2 million, depending on how your assets are actually Settled. The purpose of this is to try to figure out where the holes are. Where might somebody think they're covered and not be? Yeah, so I think that, first of all, um, really understanding how, with the CDIC specifically, like, am I, are all, is all of my right. money covered right. where I have my savings? Um, so that's a big one, and making sure that you really understand, like, the different accounts and how they're breaking out and how they're covered. And then with the investment stuff, I think that it's really interesting because um, if it's an IROC member, so maybe your brokerage is an IROC member, and, or the dealer is a member, but what if the fund provider goes under? So, for example, I don't want to actually name any names because then it's right. like people get no, scared. No, exactly, yeah. Um, but let's say that the provider, X. the provider X goes under, but your member didn't. So you could not actually be covered because their insurance doesn't cover you, but the fund provider. But the good news is, is that typically when you have a fund provider, your money is actually held at a custodian, and then the custodian might actually be covered. Gotcha. So I think that the, the big takeaway, the important thing is to know Who's actually covering your money? Is it the dealer? Is it a custodian? Who's actually covering it? How much you're covered for? And making sure that you've got your money spread out in enough institutions that you'd be right. covered just in case. It, it, is it different? Should we think about it differently? I mean, you know, the reason this has come up is because people had money in a high interest savings account rather than a traditional sort of, you know, bank account or whatever. Do, yes. do we have different rules for different kinds of accounts like that? This makes it sound like the CDIC covers them all. No, right, and so that's the thing. Like the CDIC does not cover them all, um, and so, and I also think that it's the type of accounts that you want to think about, and also the type of investments that you've got in there. Right. And so, I also think that there's something else to be said. With one more tip that I would say, if you're if you're kind of making sure that you're covered, is making sure that the financial institutions, especially with the CDIC coverage, those bank deposits, has your current address and all that right. kind of stuff, because you don't even have to apply for CDIC insurance, which is the good news. It just kind of comes. But if your contact information is all off, then you 
might get a check mailed to the wrong address. So well, that's that, that can happen. I mean, you, people would scoff at that. But my address with my bank until just last year, with my because my my mortgage isn't with it, I get everything online. Yeah. Turns out my actual address with them was an address I had in Quebec City from like years ago. Totally. A lot of my clients had that too. I was like, update your address just right. in case. Simple stuff. And they were like, oh, it's my address from three years ago. I haven't updated it yet. So that's also a really good tip. Uh, and just lastly, the, an ideal way to protect yourself. What What is the overarching theme in terms of advice that you give to your, your clients? Okay, so besides just like understanding who's protecting you and asking your advisor, ask the question. So like call up your advisor, call up your brokerage and say, are you protected? And how is my money protected? And what happens right. if it goes insolvent? So that's the first big tip. But I would also say like, don't be afraid to spread your money out amongst financial institutions. A lot of time, like there's a, lo there's a big pro to consolidating in some ways, but especially with your deposit, Deposits. Don't be afraid to have some money here and some money here, even if it means that you're taking a slightly less interest rate. Right. I think that there's a sleep at night factor, especially when things like this happen, that you know that like everything actually has insurance and that you're covered overall. And I, I mean, and if you're at the earliest stages of those relationships, those accounts, find out first. Ask around. Absolutely. Right? Always ask Never be afraid how to ask. your money is protected. There Absolutely. Uh, always great advice to have. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Shannon Lee Simmons, financial planner and founder of the new school of finance.